So this is a baritone guitar, and today I'm gonna tell you why you need one. Hey guys, Jason here. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all of that. So what is a baritone guitar? Essentially, it's a standard six string guitar that's been tuned down from E natural to B natural. I've heard it described as like a seven string guitar, but without the high E, but that's actually inaccurate. A seven string without the high E would be in a slightly different tuning because of the fifth string. I like to describe it as a reverse capo. The same way a capo transposes your guitar up however many frets you've placed the capo, a baritone guitar is the same standard six string transposed down a perfect fourth or five semitones. So now the strings are tuned to B, E, A, D, F sharp, and B. So this is the same intervals as standard tuning, just lower. So you can play the exact same chords, scales, guitar parts, they'll just be in a lower key. So you've probably heard a baritone electric guitar in spaghetti westerns or surf rock or 60s country records. One of my personal favorites, Glenn Campbell's Wichita Lion Man has a baritone playing the solo. On my all-time favorite Foo Fighters album, There's Nothing Left to Lose, the opening track, Stacked Actors, I thought was played on a baritone guitar, but I looked it up for this video, and it's actually just a normal standard six string guitar with the low E string tuned all the way down to an A, an octave under the actual A string, which is pretty cool actually. These days there's a really amazing guitarist, singer, songwriter named Ariel Posen who plays a baritone as his main guitar as part of his signature sound and it really sets him apart from everybody else in his genre. And guitarist Mark Lettieri of the band Snarky Puppy and played with a variety of other artists has made two albums of instrumental funk music using the baritone guitar and they're just insanely good. So last week I got this guitar pretty impulsively. I've had another baritone, a Dan Electro, that I got back in 2017 and it's been a great studio tool and I've tried to take the Dan Electro out for live gigs when it was appropriate but I just wasn't excited about it. First of all, the neck on the Dan Electro was so long. It was a 29.75 inch scale length. For context, a standard Fender guitar is 25 and a half inches, and most bass guitars are 34. Now, a baritone guitar needs that longer scale length in order to be stable at lower tunings with thicker strings, but it was just not comfortable for me to play. And it had lipstick pickups, which are standard for Dan Electros, and lipstick pickups are great. I'll probably need to get another guitar with those pickups just to have that sound, but on a baritone guitar, it really narrowed the tonal focus down to that tic-tac spaghetti western thing. But last week I walked in my local big box guitar store and saw this. I thought it looked really cool. I picked it up and played it and immediately knew I needed this thing. So I went home, grabbed my Dan Electro and traded it for this guy. The difference cost me roughly 50 bucks and this guitar gets me excited about playing baritone again. So this is a guitar from Squire's Paranormal series, which is a pretty cool concept. They're taking designs and features from other classic Fender instruments and sort of Frankensteining them together. This is a Cabernita Telecaster with Alnico soap bar pickups, basically P90s, one volume, one tone, and a three-way pickup toggle. In surf green with a 27 inch scale length, which is a little longer than your average Telecaster, but nearly three inches shorter than my old baritone guitar. So not only is the scale length more physically comfortable for me to play, but because of the physics of how tension and vibration work, the shorter scale length results in a little bit of a looser feel on the strings and a more deep bass heavy sound coming from the guitar itself. And with these pickups, I have a lot more tonal options than I did before. The bridge pickup gets me right in the ballpark of where my old Dan Electro was. The middle position is this interesting sort of halfway Strat, halfway Telecaster-ish tone. And the neck pickup is really warm and bassy with lots of power and articulation. So between the scale length and these pickups, this guitar puts out a crap ton of low end, which is interesting because when I play the exact same notes that I would on a standard scale guitar, it just has a different sound because the increased low end makes my amps and drive pedals react differently. Now I've unintentionally become a bit of an evangelist for Squire guitars. Now the broad assumption about Squire guitars is that they make 
cheap Fender knockoffs, which is partially true. They manufacture more affordable versions of the same guitars you can get from Fender. Generally manufactured overseas instead of in the US and utilizing more common, less boutique parts in them, they can get you that Fender thing, but at a lower cost. But in the past decade or so, especially at the high end of their price range, Squire has started making guitars that really punch above their weight class. These are rock solid instruments. And they've even started making original designs like the Paranormal series that you can't get from Fender. I mean, Squire has been around long enough at this point that there are vintage discontinued Squire guitars from as early as the 80s that are actually really sought after. The modern Squire guitars, and especially if you upgrade a couple of parts, can really compete with guitars that are way more expensive. I now own three Squire guitars. I've put some work into them, made some upgrades and modifications and really made them my own and they get used quite regularly both on stage and in the studio. Plus, I don't like being pretentious about really anything, but especially gear. If it feels good to play and it sounds good to your ears and it's a stable enough instrument that it's not gonna be a liability on a gig, then it's a great guitar, period. So I've been taking this guitar out to my weekly church gig and it's been really, really fun to play the same songs that I usually play on a standard tuned guitar and have to rethink my approach with a different voicing and a different sound coming from my instrument. So I'm gonna give you three reasons why you need a baritone guitar in your life. One, you already know how to play it. Like I said before, it's the exact same tuning intervals as a standard guitar, just tuned down to B. So if you know how to play guitar, you've already cleared that barrier of entry. All you need to do is keep in mind how what you're playing translates back to the original key. So when I play an open E chord, I'm now actually playing a B chord. A G chord is a D, A is now E, and D is now A, and so on and so forth, you get the point. But this shouldn't be too hard to do because you already do that when you put a capo on the guitar, so it's basically the same thing, just in reverse. Two, it sounds better than a pitch shifter pedal. There's been a lot of advancements recently in digital guitar processing, so pitch shifter effects are getting better and better all the time. Pedals like the Digitech Drop or the new algorithms introduced into the Line 6 Helix ecosystem now make it really easy to transpose the output of your guitar. But there's two big problems here. First being that the technology just isn't quite there yet. I've yet to hear a pedal or a plug-in for transposing the guitar that convincingly sounds like the real thing. It's because the guitar is such an idiosyncratic sound, there's just a lot of nuance to convert there and technology can't quite recreate it. It might soon, we'll see. Secondly, even on a loud stage with in-ear monitors and going direct, there's still going to be a little bit of a sound of the strings and the guitar itself resonating in the air, which will create a bit of a awkward mashup of old key and new key. So I love technology like a lot, but this is one of the select few things I'd rather do the old fashioned way. Three, it's the king of overdubs. So say you're in the studio, you need to double a guitar part or some complimentary part to support the main riff or some kind of extra ear candy that you'll bury in the mix to add extra vibe to the track. Play the exact same lead line again on the baritone transposed back to the original key with the different tension, feel, and tone of this instrument, it's gonna give you enough variation to really thicken up that part. It's pretty common to double a guitar part an octave higher so it pokes out in the mix a little bit more, but doubling a guitar part an octave down, like on a bare tone, will make it sound just huge. or just playing your standard open chords on the bare tone will give you a different chord voicing that really helps fill up the arrangement.
Not to mention just purely as a creative tool, the baritone guitar will make you think differently about how you approach your instrument. And you might come up with parts that you would not have thought up on a standard tuned guitar. So hopefully by now you see why you need a baritone guitar in your collection. There's plenty of expensive and affordable baritones on the market and you'll just have a lot of fun and be really inspired in a fresh way by this thing. Trust me. That's all for today. Like, subscribe, all the other stuff. I'm Jason. Love you guys.